Greetings, dear friends. I present your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Volvo XT60. Front-wheel drive cars are quite common, but the bulk of XT60 crossovers still have all-wheel drive with a holdix clutch in the rear axle drive. The mechanical part of transmissions doesn't have any special weak points. The resource of the CV joints, the propeller shaft and the rear gearbox is more than sufficient. With runs less than 150,000, breakdowns are extremely rare and are mainly associated with loss of oil level and mechanical damage. Purely urban cars with constant plug operation may have a less resource of the intermediate shaft support, but such cases are rare. All-wheel drive for cars until 2012 is carried out using the fourth-generation Holdex clutch and after the fifth. It is easiest to distinguish between them visually. Fifth-generation couplings have a separate pump unit, an electronic board on the right side and a more compact body of the coupling itself. The fifth-generation couplings are easier to maintain. You do not need to remove the propeller shaft to change the oil, and on the fourth-generation couplings, the pump rests against the propeller shaft coupling when removed. But newer couplings require maintenance much more often. The pump mesh becomes clogged after 20-30,000 run, which leads to its failure. The fifth generation doesn't have a hydraulic accumulator and a separate filter. It is generally much simpler and cheaper, but unfortunately it remains more expensive to repair. The Porsche Holdex is much better in its respect. This clutch, without any special consequences, with gentle operation, transfers the oil change after 40-50,000 runs for the first time and about 30-40,000 in subsequent runs. For neat drivers and with runs under 100,000, the oil may turn out to be clean and the chances of pump failure are much less. With an active use of all-wheel drive, a clutch of any generation should be sorted out with removing the cover and cleaning the crankcase every two or three years. With the active forcing of forts, problems with the electronic part of the couplings are possible, especially if the service was too lazy to service the connectors. There are no particular difficulties with manual transmissions. The M66 six-speed gearbox with careful operation proved to be quite reliable, but the oil level should be monitored and those who lack driving especially low revolutions should worry about the resource of the two mass flywheels. With automatic transmission, everything is somewhat more complicated. The bulk of cars in our market are diesel versions with 6-speed automatic transmission icing TF80SC. The same box was installed before styling with 3.2 and 3.0 liter gasoline engines. The pre-styling gasoline 2 liter cars were equipped with a D6 DCT450 selective automatic transmission made by Gutrag, while after restyling 2-liter diesel and gasoline cars were equipped with an 8-speed automatic transmission icing TJ81SC aka AWF 8F35 AWF 8F45. The number of complaints about the icing automatic transmission is quite large, but nevertheless they are considered quite reliable and experienced Volvo drivers love them. Paradox? Not at all. These boxes are just very strong, but the standard cooling system, to put it mildly, is rather weak. It endures normal operation during the warranty period, subject to a mild European regime. This automatic transmission loves low city speeds, no sharp accelerations, stable speed, no hard overtaking on the track, clean radiators and carry mechanics. The manufacturer promises that the box will cover 350,000 km. It is believed that Scandinavian cars must drive that much so that the consumer is satisfied. In our conditions and with our drivers, after hundreds of thousands with regular maintenance, one can expect the appearance of minor problems in the form of jerks, slippage during switching due to combination of the valve body, contamination of the valve body and damage to the solenoids. In cars from large cities can have a significantly greater number of problems due to permanent overheating of the transmission in the summer. Almost all complaints about Volvo's transmission problems arise from those who believe the standard manual and official services do not install additional cooling and change the oil at least once every 60-90,000 km. Experienced Volvo drivers install additional radiators and external filters without waiting for the first call, change the oil every 30,000 km and have no problems throughout the entire run in any operating mode. However, there are plenty of casual Volvo buyers and those who consider the factory design to be infallible and the need for regular repairs as an undoubted and not burdensome duty are enough even among fans of the brand, so it's worth talking about the problems they face. The main problem with all icing automatic transmissions is the wear of the valve body plate and the lack of official solenoid repair kits. All contamination eats away at the aluminum oil the plate and even with the installation of new solenoids, the box will not work like new. More precisely, it will not work when the adaptation limit of the control unit is reached, and these limits are quite large. 
So the scanner and flushing often work wonders, the main thing is not to bring the automatic transmission to the destruction of the mechanical part. The friction linings of the gas turbine engine do not withstand a too aggressive driving style, which unfortunately is becoming common for the last draft Volvo drivers. Even after hundreds of thousands of kilometers, one can observe accelerated contamination of even fresh oil due to wear of the linings to the adhesive layer, in which case an urgent repair of the gas turbine engine is required. Fortunately for the XC60, the bulk of the cars are equipped with classic 2.4 liter diesel engines with a very mild thermal mode, which also had a good effect on the operation of the automatic transmission. The operating conditions of the box with gasoline engines are noticeably tougher and the resource of the boxes is significantly less, especially for aggressive drivers. The newer 8-speed unit TG81SC, AWF8F35, AWF8F45 is in many ways similar to the improved and supplemented version of the 6-speed box. The mileage of cars with it is still small and the complaints concern mainly the hard switching down which sometimes manifests itself with runs up to 30,000 km, as well as strange transitions to emergency mode. The design remains quite exotic for our market, so there are definitely problems with the repair. But overseas users are reporting the benefits of additional cooling and soloing problems with the valve body replacement. An interesting feature is the use of a dual-mass flywheel paired with an automatic transmission. So if you hear tapping at low revolutions, remember that there is such a detail. Front-wheel drive cars with 2.0 liter motors meet with the Keytrak 6DCT450 gearbox. In short, do not be afraid of it in panic. There are a lot of engines in store for the Volvo XT60. There are inline petrol 6s with a volume of 3.2 and 3.0 liters, well known from the second generation S80 model, and 2 liter gasoline turbo engines, just as well known from the second generation S60. But surprisingly, the most popular option turned out to be 2.4 liter diesel engines in various boost op options. The reason for the popularity is quite obvious. Diesels cover a good range in terms of power, they mainly combine classic automatic transmissions and four wheel drive. They are quite economical and moreover, they are presented in all trim levels, from inexpensive to top end. Well, of course, these motors deservedly carry the status of reliable and time tested because these are the last representatives of the modular engine series, which dates back to the 90s. I do not want to say anything bad about other engines, they are very good at Volvo, but diesels are very good even against their background. The motors of the third generation D54, D52, XX line, which were installed on the XC60, retain the main features of their predecessors. All the same 5 cylinders, 4 wells per cylinder, an aluminum block, a camshaft belt drive and a fair amount of safety. The most powerful variants have about 440 nanometers of torque and more than 215 horsepower. What can you tell about the few mechanical failures? For example, sometimes rockets in the timing drive fail, playing the role of a fuse when the timing belt breaks. They are susceptible to torsion damage, especially on motors with mileage over 200,000. It is recommended to change the timing mechanism every 60,000 and carefully monitor it for all contamination, motors are prone to fogging and even leaks. Most of the complaints are caused by quite typical diesel problems, contamination and leaks of injectors, contamination of the intake manifold and the breakdown of the valve drive, changing the geometry, contamination of the EGR valve, contamination and leaks of its heat exchanger. Contamination of the particulate filter is a problem, in general typical for all diesel engines, and in Volvo the engine really doesn't like those who do not drive on the highway at all. The layout of the auxiliary systems causes quite a few minor annoyances. For some reason, a long intake manifold and its vibrations among owners are considered the cause of oil leaks, although in practice oil leaks from the intake are only an indicator for them. And the modification fashionable among Volvo drivers with the installation of an additional mounting bracket, the crankiest ventilation system will not be repaired. Although the vibrations in the intake manifold cause the engine compartment wiring harness and the front cooling pipe to fray, it is more efficient to remove the Helmholtz resonator, which is very large here and can rub a hole in the electrical and the cooling system. Another feature of the motor of the XC60 is the absence of a standard oil dipstick. An electronic level sensor is used here. If possible, it is worth installing a classic dipstick. The oil can begin to decrease when the ventilation system is dirty or the turbine is damaged very quickly. And the electronics sometimes fail, and there are already many ruined motors on the conscience of the electronic sensor. The appearance of cracks in the pistons with leaking injectors 
and overblowing is unfortunately a fairly common problem, especially if cooking oil was used, the piston cooling nozzles are dirty and the owner doesn't pay attention to the excess volume of crankcase gases for a long time. When buying a car, pay attention to the volume of crankcase gases and oiling of the engine. And it is better to measure the compression even with low mileage, especially if there are traces of overheating or the likelihood of installing chip tuning. When using low viscosity as AE20 oils, there are also chances of crankshaft, scuffing and increased wear of the linears after 150,000 mileage, but this is still a very rare problem. In the world of modern disposable motors, engines of this series can still be considered mainstay of stability, ease of maintenance and intelligence. On this information about the problems of the Volvo XT60 is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.